Hello everyone and welcome back to the Magnus Invitational. We are at round four with the second pair of the uh, of the players, uh, Anish Giri with the White Beasts against Ding Lir, and this is the first match we're going to cover. And Giri so far without a single uh, game uh, won in this tournament, so maybe Ding will be uh, the unlucky character uh, or, or the victim uh, for Giri. Uh, so without further ado, let's check it out. It's it's uh, quite the theoretical struggle. Uh, so D4 by Giri, Knight F6, C4 and the g6 uh, we have the king's indian defense knight c3 and now transposing into the groom field we have d5 uh, and c captures on d5 just going for uh, the, the the classical way knight captures e4 knight captures on c3 b captures and bishop to g7 so this is all uh, very standard stuff uh, bishop to c4 and now c5 uh, attacking white's strong center we have knight to e2 uh, defending and knight to c6 again attacking with bishop to e3 defending and both players uh, just castle here uh, and uh, sorry uh, both players just castle here and now uh, b6 uh, again uh, this is all all very standard uh, and here rook to c1 uh, we have bishop to b7 developing the light square bishop and then now comes a bishop to b5 uh, making it hard for for black to develop the rook if you if you go here then d5 comes uh, and also as black will probably capture once on d4 uh, you will already have uh, two of your pieces attacking the knight here so here uh, we have a trade captures captures and uh, this capture is a new move in the position it's never been attempted before so it is as of move 12 that we have a completely new game so let's see what ding had in mind uh, C captures and now uh, defending the knight, rook to c8 and queen to d2. Giri develops the queen, prepares rook to d1 and at some point uh, he wants to push d5 of course. Uh, we have e6 by ding, preventing that for the moment and rook f to d1. Uh, knight to a5, offering to, uh, to trade off a pair of rooks and ding trades. We have rook captures, queen captures and bishop to g5 now. Uh, the idea is that uh, if, uh, if of course, the pawn is captured, then bishop to e7 and the rook uh, doesn't have any squares. Your, uh, black's going to have to give up the exchange. So here, ding just goes queen to c7. Uh, and now ding starts pushing uh, the, the pawn. We have d5. With this, he creates a pass pawn. E captures uh, c... Uh, sorry, e captures, e captures. And queen to c5 now, putting pressure on the bishop here. Uh, and the giri defends it. Uh, queen to d3. Uh, and here, queen to d6. Ding, Ding now blocks uh, the pawn here uh, with his queen, but Giri just kicks it away. Bishop to f4, we have bishop to e5, and now by trading here, you allow the pawn to start marching forward. So d6, rook to d8, uh, and now comes d7. So this is either a very strong pawn or uh, it's going to be a liability later on. So Ding will try to win it uh, at all costs. So first knight to c6, uh, he just uh, gets... Uh, uh, puts the puts the knight in front of the bishop, so the bishop is not uh, defending the pawn, and uh, he will try to put more pressure on it. Uh, we have knight to c3 by Giri, and now a6 uh, attacking uh, uh, Giri's uh, bishop here. And here uh, you don't really have a you don't really have a clear way of what to do. Bishop to c4 probably, then b5, then bishop back to b3, and then the game just continues. Uh, but uh, it's hard to say. Uh, will you be able to do something with with this pawn of yours? However, Giri played something else here. Giri here played bishop captures on a6, and this is a huge problem as it blunders a piece. Uh, Ding just captured the bishop and now uh, your queen is under attack and you don't really have much options here. Uh, Giri captured and Ding just uh, grabbed the knight here. So uh, Giri continues with queen to c8, uh, just uh, putting the queen there. There's uh, no actual threat here for the moment since uh, of course black will never capture and if you capture the knight just uh, picks it up. So queen c2 goes after the rook, rook to e1 and now queen to d2. Uh, again, harassing the rook. We have rook to e8 check by Giri, but again, king to g7. And now the problem for Giri is he can't win back his piece because he has back rank issues. Now, if you just uh, pick up uh, the, the piece here, just queen to e1 is checkmate. So after king to g7, Giri played h3, uh, but now uh, you know what to do. Uh, it's not enough just to have a good position. You, you also have to win it. Uh, so feel free to pause the video here and try to win this game for Ding. Uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. 
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, uh, remaneuvering the queen with checks. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen d1 check, king h2, and queen to d6 check. You use the, the two checks to come back and defend the knight. And now once the king moves or g3, as was played in the game, uh, just rook captures on d7. So this is what Ding played, and it was a move 33 that Anish Giri resigned the game. So no no uh, win for Anish Giri uh, as of yet, uh, but the match continues. We'll see what happens uh, in the in the games to come. So here he resigns as he's down a knight, uh, and that's just uh, pointless to continue. There's no way no way to say this better. So yeah, uh, that's game one of their match. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Eric uh, Pilkington, uh, Callahan Cohen, uh, Robert Greaves, uh, Xavier Martin, and uh, Andrew Robson for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the Magnus Invitational uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.